and welcome to Straight Shooting with Dan and Joseph. Tune into this podcast to get the latest news on competitive shooting events and to learn how to become a better shooter. Remember to subscribe to the podcast and be sure to recommend it to all of your shooting friends. Hello, I'm Dan Kello alongside Joseph Stacker here and we're with episode one of year one of Straight Shooting with Dan and Joseph bringing in this podcast here because we would like to share our knowledge that we have in uh, 2 2 rimfire benchrest is primarily our background but we're getting into other disciplines and we want to learn from the best and so we'll have different guests on the show to uh, express their wisdom for whatever shooting discipline it may be it may be uspsa could be nrl 22 uh, prone three position anything shooting sports related that's what we're all about we both work at kello shooting sports and just to give you a little bit of introduction of each one of us, uh, again, my name is Dan Killo, and I started competing in Rimfire Benchrest in 2004. In 2008, I was the American Rimfire Association A-Line National Champion, and in 2011, I was lucky enough to win the uh, Sporter World Championships. I started Killo Shooting Sports in 2008 to sell Rimfire Benchrest products to the competitors, and in 2010, I ended up taking over uh, American Rim Fire Association. The gentleman that started that passed that on over to me. So we've been running the American Rim Fire Association now for going on 10 years. Uh, 2009, I started the Professional Shooting League, which is a 22 bench rest competition league that basically is some big money matches. And in 2012, we opened the Ely Test Range here in Texas at our facility and about a year ago this is almost a year ago wasn't it almost to the day almost to the day a year ago uh joseph came on board as our customer range officer and has been helping us ever since so what's some little background on yourself joseph uh, i've always shot ever since i was a kid my dad's a big um, hunter shooter kind of outdoorsman and he always reloaded and things like that and so that was just kind of my Growing up, being around guns, having to learn how to use them safely. Um, but until I was probably 17 or 18, very limited pistol experience. Just because it was mostly, if you know, if we were using a gun, it was to hunt. And so, not very... Other than that, wasn't very practical use. Basically just hunting. Um... So kind of on my own, once I was able to kind of start buying guns just for me, stuff like that, I started getting into pistol stuff, just whatever was cool at the time. Like Sometimes it was Glocks, sometimes it was SIGs. Never jumped on the 1911 train, but just recreational hunting use, uh, but quite a bit of shooting experience just Good from deal. that. Now, you grew up the whole... Just about your entire school career here in small town of Winters, Texas, isn't that right? I mean, your brief stint in Arkansas? Yeah, the um, I moved away. We moved uh, the summer after my junior year, um, so I was gone for about two years. But other than that. Now, in Arkansas, were you small town boy there, too, or city boy? The It was still a small town. I mean, the population was almost the same. It was still like 3,200 people, but it was from a, a 1A school to a 5A school was the big difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a big jump there. No uh, no culture shock other than school. Both Joseph and I grew up here in winters, a small town, 2,000 to 3,000 people, and uh, and we're used to small town mentality, small town uh, being out in the country, hunting and fishing, and, and just firearms are kind of a way of, a way of life. And as we naturally kind of went into competition shooting, I just always, I've always been competitive, played sports going up, and I know you did too, we live in small town, if you're, if you're a boy in small town, you play sports, <laughs> you play sports. so um, just got that competitive edge going in there, and why not bring the two together, I mean, they're both so much fun, so yep. that's kind of how we got started in on it, all right, very good, <laughs> wrong button, moving right along now, we're going to try to give you some match updates, uh, every podcast we'll have these podcasts about every two weeks and want to kind of keep you uh abreast of what's going on in the competition shooting world if you have a competition you would like us to talk about or want us to 
acknowledge some of your winners and whatnot, uh, just email Joseph those results, and it's joseph.s at kelloshootingsports.com. And we'll put that. Uh, we're also going to have this on YouTube, so there will be a YouTube channel. You can tune into it. Mm-hmm. We will have uh, the relevant email addresses posted on that. Yeah, and all the links for everything that we talk about, whether it's um, the ammo, equipment, stuff like that, those links will be up there to – the appropriate store or website all right very good all right start off with of course we're going to start with american rimfire association that's our bread and butter and um get you some results there remember you can go to americanrimfire.com and all these are posted on there but the uh, some local or results that recently come out of california tehama bob tornai won that match uh they had a new factory class match there with Artie vod winning that and we'll talk a little bit later about the new ara factory class over in florida we at port malabar rifle and pistol club chris van austrin was the winner on february 1st back out in california in redding john harrison won that match at redding rim fire and then february 1st in louisiana palo alto rifle and pistol club gary waggis pack from mississippi won that particular match so still early in the year here very beginning of February, about all we've got going on really is uh, indoor shooting and then, of course, some shooting across the sta- state. Uh, coming up in ARA next uh, on the 8th, be this weekend, uh, if you're in North Carolina, Rocky River Barn in Albemarle, North Carolina, is going to have the state, uh, North Carolina State Indoor Tournament and uh, going to have a club tournament as well on one day. Uh, if you're near the Louisiana in um, – Lake Providence, Howard Prince Indoor Range is going to have state tournament on Saturday and a club tournament on Sunday, and I'll be going to that. Leave out early in the morning. I'll have the KSS store there and set up and be shooting and selling some stuff, having a good time. If you want to brave it a little bit outdoors, Kettlefoot Gun Club has match going on this weekend, and Reds in Missouri is uh, shooting a little bit as well. And I think both of those, Kettlefoot and Reds, you're actually – Technically, it's outdoor because the muzzle's outdoor, but they're actually yeah. sitting inside shooting out a window, so don't have to worry about the elements too much. Uh, some other disciplines for bench rest, we got IR 50-50 the, uh, on the 9th at Tucker's Creek Rim Fire Club in West Virginia, and then Kettlefoot Gun Club is going to have IR 50-50 match be next weekend on the 15th. And then also big match, big weekend at Piney Hill Indoor Club in Luray, Virginia. They're going to have the Virginia State on Saturday, the unlimited 10-shot uh, match, and then the national 10-shot match on Sunday. So big weekend there for our 50-50 in Lou Ray, Virginia. Uh, not too long ago on the 25th, 26th at the Lou Ray, Virginia there at Piney Hill, they had the triple deuce, which is basically two cards from three different bliss disciplines. They shoot two ARA, two PSL, and two 50-50. Uh, George Donovan won that from Ohio, won the PSL portion. Don Kowalski won the ARA portion, and Mark Mankin won the IR 50-50 portion. In the overall, uh, Mark Mankin came in fifth, Tim Miller in fourth, Chuck Morrell was third, Tom Wilkinson was second, and your overall winner of the Triple Deuce there was Don Kowalski. So congratulations to those guys. Good shooting there. Moving over to the ABRA, the Auto Bentrest Association, where – they do a little bit of bolt gun, but primarily are a semi-auto uh, score shooting again. Uh, upcoming, they've got an Elbert County Gun Club in Elberton, Georgia. Uh, February 16th, they got a match. And then February 22nd, just down the road from us, San Angelo Gun Club is going to have a match. A couple of results coming from them. January 25th, down in Edinburgh, Texas, at Coyote Arm Shooting Center. Uh, Mark Self won the Outlaw Heavy Class in ABRA. And Bert, and I'm going to butcher this, F-A-R-I-A-S, Farias, Farias. Anyway, Bert, good shooting. Bert won the Outlaw Light Class in ABRA there. Also that same weekend in Fresno, Ohio, in the indoor club, they had the Ohio State Indoor Tournament for ABRA, and the factory class was won by Doug Depwig, and unlimited class won by Jim Starr, and Outlaw Heavy won by Jim Starr. So congratulations to those guys actually the ohio state the ohio state yeah yeah it's not talking about the university but whatever Ohio. all right then you had some other matches for us joseph yeah with uh uspsa um just an outline 
for this first quarter uh, will be in Florida the 26th of March. Um, and that's for the Area 6 Glock Championship. Before that, we will also be in Florida. Yeah, for the Florida Open, which is on February 13th. That's next week. Yeah, that's in Frostproof, and it should be a pretty big match. Uh, it's one of the first big, big matches of the year. And then the very next week, we'll be in Rosenberg uh, for Henry's Cup. And that's at Area 59. Uh, we just got back from there in, what, November? Yeah, October, November, we were over there uh, to finish up the year in the USPSA. Mm -hmm. And with that, um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, Max Michelle is dominating carry optics, <laughs> and Christian Seiler is dominating the open division. They're tough to beat. <laughs> that's for sure. That's for sure. But we've been having a lot of fun with uh, USPSA getting started in it. Uh, Kello Shooting Sports, of course, we sell a lot of Ely products and proud to, to be a part of Ely. And uh, they brought out their 38 Super Comp Major ammunition, so we've been going around and promoting that. Joseph and uh, Joseph Stacker and then Steve uh, Barone, or Barron. He says it Barone, I say it Barron, uh, will be representing us there. So be sure and go down to the Florida Open or to Henry's Cup and meet Joseph and Steve. And if you like I say, if you're around Louisiana, I'll be in Lake Providence at Howard Prince Indoor Gun Club this coming weekend. Would love to meet y'all if y'all want to come by and talk a little bit. All right, what about NRL 22? Anything going on in that world? We need, we need to get some more results from that. We need to get with Jim Cannon and get some of those. Yeah, and it's those are hard to track because there's only there's there's pretty much only two places in Texas that do it, and that's yep. Midland and Lubbock. Yep. And so if you're if you're around there either west or north texas uh you can you can look those up they're super fun matches they're very tactical um some kind of off shooting positions i mean it'll challenge you uh but other than that there's a lot more matches going on up north yep and out than, west than there are in texas and we will be having uh a match in utah the last weekend in march we'll invite y'all out to that jim cannon's getting that together uh, going to be a big match. Uh, Joseph and I are going to go out there and actually have the mobile range and do some uh, rifle testing, ammo testing, and then leading up to that match. And then uh, Joseph's going to leave there, go straight, go back, straight Florida. back to Florida from Utah to go to the uh, – that's the Glock Area 6, right? Yeah, that's Area 6. Going there. And I'm going to stick around in Utah and finish out that weekend with that NRL 22 match. So we'll have more information for you about that as, as time gets closer. But uh, that'll do it for the match updates. Again, if you want us to mention your club or your organization, email joseph.s at kelloshootingsports.com and give that to us, and we'll be glad to acknowledge any of the winners. All right, moving along to the straight shooting challenge. We would like to challenge you, the listener, to give us some shooting challenges that Joseph and I can do on, uh, against one another or against whomever. Um, Joseph is a, is a young whippersnapper, so I'll, me being the old man of the group, we'll do these various difficult shots and see who can do them the best. I really wanted to do one today, but believe it or not, we're in West Central Texas and it's snowing, yeah. and we're not getting above freezing all day long, so we will have one on the video for you uh, in a couple of weeks there by the time we have a new episode, and our first one we're going to do is uh, basically we're going to try to we're not going to try. We're going to cut a playing card in half at 50 yards, shooting it with a 22 off of a bench. That's vertically. Yeah. Yeah, wow. so we're going to turn the, turn the playing card up to the side and shoot it and cut it in half. I've seen it done on videos. I ain't ever seen it done in person, but. Well, that means it can be done. Well, I know. It can be done. Uh, how many shots do you think it'll take you? <laughs> now, I think we'll put we'll put a piece of paper behind it. Oh, yeah. That'll make it a little easier, so that way you can see where you're missing. Yeah. That'd be real difficult if you didn't have nothing behind it, but we'll cheat a little bit. Maybe at least the first go around, put a piece of paper up behind it, and because uh, if we got our piece of paper up behind it and we got the card up here like this, then we miss left or right. We How can many see. to cut it in half or just to hit it? Cut it in half. I'm just don't you, you don't think you can cut it in half in one shot? Well, because you can graze it. Yeah, I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean cut it in half. 
Less than 10, I would think. Less than 10? Okay. Yeah. And if you send a challenge in, I think it has to be something that you can also do. Yeah, yeah. Send us a video of, or maybe put it on YouTube and send Joseph the link of you doing it. Uh, I don't know, trying to think of some future ones, shooting some uh, tees off, uh, or heads off golf tees, or <laughs> shooting golf balls at 100 yards. Or we could do the ones where they split the bullet into, like, two balloons. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to see that. that that's, uh, f uh, um, oh, what's the forging knife making oh, one yeah. forged by fire yeah forged that w i've seen them do that on there testing the strength of the blade to see if it hold up to a bullet but uh but anyway we're going to be looking forward to doing that going to have a lot of fun to that but we'd like to challenge you to do it yourself send us a video of it put it on youtube uh and send joseph the link and again anything else that we could do uh that might be fun and challenging um, to see who the better shooter is send that over to us and we'll be glad to do it and let you know how it went and if you don't have a, an email address for, for whatever reason or you're kind of restricted on your your contacts, um, you can find any of our pages, whether that's Ely USA or the Action DVC page, um, me personally on Instagram or the KSS page, whatever. Wherever you can find us, you can send any of this in and we will get it. Okay. Tell me your Instagram pages. Uh, mine, my personal page is PS Photog. Um, there's a lot of Ely and KSS stuff on there. Um, and I also run the Ely Action DVC page that we just started, which is basically just a way to keep up with our USPSA events and the product line that, that's coming out for that whether it's ammo or uh, shooting equipment, accessories, stuff like that, whatever it may be. All right, very good. That does it for this episode in the Straight Shooting Challenge. Moving along to Precision Shots, brought to you by Kello Shooting Sports, your one-stop shop for all your competition shooting needs. In this part of the episode, every other week when we have this we're going to identify either some products to talk about or bring in interviews with people that are well experts yeah well versed in their classes we've got some of them that we just to give you a preview of the year we've got uh, Jim Cannon's going to be on in a couple of months going over NRL 22 and the ins and the outs of that getting started and whatnot we'll have Wade Hull on from Schilling Rifles talk about barrel manufacturing and and uh, how to make a barrel. Schilling really makes really good rimfire barrels. Match grade. Match grade, absolutely. And um, looking to talk to some of our others. Ely has sponsored shooters that we have access to. Uh, Kurt Grimes and Steve Foster, both in the steel challenge shooting world. We'll imagine we'll have them on at some point. But uh, And if you would like us to interview somebody, somebody that you want to hear from in the shooting sports world uh, again email us email joseph at joseph.s at kello shooting sports.com and we're always looking for ideas on what we can bring on but basically we just want to learn about all the different shooting competitions and how we can be better because one thing i have learned as we've run kello shooting sports and people try to get into rimfire bench rest they come in and i did the same thing i did the exact same thing i try to cheat my way into it and and we started off when um as far as like shortcutting yeah i mean equipment yeah oh i can oh, do that just... with my three hundred dollar gun i don't need a three thousand dollar gun i can get in there with those boys how and many matches did that take for yeah no yeah. it didn't take long so i'll tell you brief all right here so me and my uncle started shooting together my uncle uh, donald so we're like Immediately, we see that at San Angelo Gun Club, they were shooting our 50-50 matches, and we thought, well, that looked like fun. We can go shoot with them boys. Well, let's practice because we just don't want to show up and get our tail whooped. So let's build it up. Well, if they're building guns and changing barrels, they must be doing 20, 10-22s because, you know, it's right. easy to change out those, change out triggers. So that's what we started doing. And uh, anyway, so our 50-50, you have 25 bulls, get 10 on each bull, so 250 is what you're trying to do, and then they have an X. So The per scoring on it is what makes it difficult, though, isn't it? Well, two fi honestly, in the big, if you're running with the big boys on those, you got to shoot a 250. Right. Or you're going to be out of it, yeah. and then it comes down to Xs. Um, 
But if you don't have a 250, then you have to count on everybody else also not also having not having a missing one. And then, um, yeah, because you can have a 251X and beat the guy with 249 24X. Right. Um, so anyway, just to let you know where we were at with that, we were getting really excited because we broke 200. <laughs> and well, that said, probably was good with whatever you were using. Yeah, I mean, because we, we were green, green, green. Yeah. And um, junky rest, junky, I mean, just really going on the cheap end. Went over to San Angelo, and they just cleaned our clock. <laughs> we were, we were. I think there was 15 of us, and my uncle was 14th, and I was 15th. <laughs> So what do you start doing? You start looking up and down the line going, well, what are these boys what shooting? Have, yeah. And over in San Angelo, they had a lot of Remington 40Xs, a lot of 54 on shoots and everything. So uh, that's quickly what we did. That was, that was probably like uh, whatever year it was. That was probably like peak time for the 40X. Yeah, there was a lot of 40Xs coming. They're kind of on their way yeah. out, I think, now. Yeah. Well, what happened was back then was the CMP had gotten a bunch of 40Xs, and they were selling them for 400 bucks. And that was a real deal at four hundred dollars. Yeah. So guys were getting them, and then they would rebarrel them. And um, and quite honestly, the forty X is as good as any action out there made for rimfire bench rest. And you, I mean, if you really want to run with the big dogs, you do need to change out the barrel and change out the trigger. But that's pretty commonplace. And um, at the time, there wasn't a whole lot of custom actions out there in the marketplace. So forty X and Winchester fifty twos and everything was what everybody had. And we finally got to where we could compete with the fellas in San Angelo and win on occasion, but was always in the top five. And so then I said, you know what? Let's go. Let's go to Dallas. Big D. Shoot some ARA. Change our competition. Change level the up. competition level. And I went there and dead last <laughs> <laughs> because everybody there had a custom gun. Yeah. They had a custom gun, and then that's when I stepped into the world. But anyway, long story short. I would have spent two years probably wasting my time if I had just started off with a custom rifle and cried once. Yeah, it's three thousand, thirty five hundred dollars, but you save a lot of time and a lot of heartache, and and that's kind of what we're learning in the USPSA too, as we've started doing that now with Ely having thirty eight super comp. Uh, that's just one thing I'm just trying to do. All right, find out who's the best. Let's go learn from them. Get some training on how to do it right. Give me the top-notch equipment right now because if that's what the winner's shooting, there's a reason why the winner is shooting that. Well, the um, USPSA, I think, is – there's more levels to it than that. Yeah, yeah, there's a bunch. It It's not just equipment dependent. It's skill-based also. It is. It is quite because, a bit. I mean, honestly, from a logistics standpoint, as far as cost to get into it, Production mm -hmm. is the easiest to get yeah. into, but it's the hardest to compete in, unless you're just some blazing, you know, stock pistol shooter. Right. You're you're not gonna fare very well competing in production class, but entry level that would be more of an entry level than like limited or open. Yeah, just from a monetary standpoint. But you have to be pretty good. Absolutely. And so, based on some of that experience, ARA, we decided this year to bring out the factory division. And it's a lot like production in USPSA or the base class in NRL 22. Because of kind of like my experience I just said, um, you go to some of those bigger matches where everybody's got a, comp, uh, a full out custom gun on the line and I walk up with my Savage, um, they're going to. They're gonna blow my doors off. Which, there ain't I no mean, way. it doesn't mean it doesn't make your gun inferior. It, it just can't can't compete. With it's two different items. Yeah. I mean, and, and you and you're talking two different price points too. So we've started the factory division. So look for your uh, AmericanRimfire.com at all the various uh, clubs around the country, and uh, and check out the factory division classes that are gonna be up. Or if you want to start some ARA classes at your club. Just contact us. You can call us at 325-754-5771 uh, or email us. Uh, you can email uh, Joseph or Paul. Uh, Paul Tolstead works with us, really does a lot on the ARA side of things. And the best way to get a hold of him is uh, contact us at kelloshootingsports.com. But basically, the factory division is designed to get new people out. Just bring 22 that you've got that was grandpa's or Uncle John's that you inherited and bring it on out. The general rules of it are you 
you can't do hardly anything to the rifle. Uh, we're wanting to keep it to where it's it's inexpensive, and you'll be able to be competitive with some inexpensive equipment. Um, if the rifle is currently in production, then the MSRP needs to be under a thousand dollars. If it's no longer being produced, then we have an approved factory rifle list. Then the rifle needs to be on that list. And again, we're not looking for on shoots or Remington 40Xs or those things. Those need to be in the unlimited class. We're looking for Savage, CZ 455, 457, um, anything under a thousand dollars. Ruger 1022s. Be able to get in there and you can compete. Have must have a two piece rest. Uh, you can change the trigger as long as the trigger remains safe. Uh, can't really do anything else to the gun. You can um, you can bed it. You can cut the butt off to shorten the length of pull if you have a kid or something. You can take the swivel studs out of the forearm and out of the to make it butt flush. stock. Yeah, to make it flat, but you can't change the stock. You can recrown it if you um, if you ding the crown or something, but really there's not really much of a reason to recrown um, unless something has been damaged there. But other than that, you can't do anything else to it. No tuners. Use whatever scope you want, but uh, just come out and have some fun. we got a new ARA factory target. It looks exactly like the unlimited target, just bigger. And it's going to be scored exactly the same way, and we're looking to have a lot of fun with that this year and to get some new people out shooting shooting with us. And uh, to help promote it, we've teamed up with Savage Arms and Cytron, and every quarter we're going to be giving away a Savage 22 rifle with a Cytron 36 power scope on it and a brick of Ely ammunition. And in order to get into that rifle, you just need to – compete in a factory class match, a sanctioned factory class ARA match, and every target you shoot gets you one entry into the drawing. And we'll have a drawing at the end of every quarter. So right after the end of the March, I think it's April 7th we've got on there, will be our first one. So go out, shoot two matches, you shot six targets, then you got six entries, and then your entry is going to stay in the entire year. So uh, ought to be a good time. And uh, come out and the more you shoot the more chances you got to be a winner on that uh, a couple other things going on big in ARA and I'm just going to give you a brief overview of them right quick uh, we are for our the match directors for the ARA they got ways to win an all expenses paid trip to the Ely factory in the UK uh, get 10,000 rounds of ammo matched to their gun at the factory and uh, going to have a trip there they're going to get you over there they're going to put you up and they're going to wine and dine you and have a good time um, we'll have three different match directors to do that. The match director who has the most number of new competitors is going to go. The one with the highest total outdoor targets in the unlimited class shot will go, and the one with the highest number of factory targets completed outdoors will go. So that's looking heck, to do that. That's a heck of a deal. It is a deal, and I, I, I can't wait to go. Honestly, i got to do what I can to go with them because it's going to be a good time. Well, just the ammo, just having – 10,000 rounds matched to your rifle. Yep, that's $3,800. That's, <laughs> that's $3,800 right there. And then to be able to go through and see the uh, factory, I've been over to the factory three times now, and uh, Joseph had not been yet. We need to get you over. We may have to get you over there with them just to be a good excuse for you to go see the factory. Cause I've it, been trying. It's uh, it's it's just it's really amazing to watch that thing work and to see everything and, and the amount of detail. work and detail they put in to making, uh, making the best uh, – yeah, Make I'd, the best thing in the world. Um, I know the gist of the process, but seeing it would be yeah something else. It it it's almost overwhelming. So many things you do. That's why I've, every time I go, I mean, I've been in three times, and I mean, this last time I went, and they're like, "Oh, you've been here twice, haven't you?" I said, "Yeah." I said, "But I still want to tour. Good, thug me through it again." Because one thing that it'd been a year, so yeah. they changed a couple things. But then two, I was just I know I'd already forgot a lot of it. And then another thing Ely's doing for the ARA, uh, we're going to have the winner of the ARA Outdoor Unlimited A-Line and Aggregate Line, as well as the Factory Class A-Line and Aggregate Line, uh, basically going to be sponsored shooters for the next year. Going to get 10,000 um, rounds of semi-auto precision to the um, Factory Class guys, and then the Unlimited guys will get the 10X. They're going to get some Ely apparel and whatnot, so that'll be good for those national champions there. Wish that had been there when I won a few years back, but it wasn't. All right. the, so touching on that factory class, this is intended to be an entry-level division. It's not um, – I mean, we understand the restrictions that we're putting on it, 
but they're there for a reason because we don't want this to be it's not just another division that somebody that's been competing in unlimited ARA to go and have an advantage at. Right. That's why the rifle restrictions are there. Yep. That's why it's set up the way that it is because it's we want new people like if I was just getting into ARA shooting, this is what I would do. Yep. Because somebody most people my age aren't going to have the budget or the willingness to to drop the money that requires a, like an unlimited gun and if you don't have that then you're not going to be competitive and so this is extremely doable super easy for for a young shooter or somebody just wanting to try it out i mean yep if if you just if you're interested in something and you, you just want to see what it's like it's uh not as big of a kick in the pocket to drop you know 500 600 bucks than it is with like an unlimited rifle where it's three to four thousand right and if you don't like it then you're only out that much and turn around and sell it for probably the same you got in it but it may not work out that way if it's an unlimited, unlimited rifle absolutely all right, that'll wrap up Precision Shots for this episode. Uh, next episode, we're going to come back, tune in. Uh, we're going to be talking about 22 tuners. We get tons and tons of questions on tuners and how to use a tuner and what tuner to use and how to set it and everything, and we've got quite a bit of experience doing those with our customer range. We've had the ability to do a lot of testing with them and set up a lot. We're probably at two to 300 different rifles that we've now tuned at our facility. Uh, between myself and Joseph and some of the other range offers we have. So we've got quite a bit of experience with that and want to share our knowledge on that with tuning. So tune in in two weeks in episode two, and we'll be going over tuners for the 22 long rifle. All right, moving on to bleeding off with Joseph. Now, as we had stated earlier, Ely come out with 38 Super Comp. And... We've been doing everything we can to promote that and sell that and getting us over into USPSA shooting. We're really having a good time with it. But we're green. We're new. And we're trying to learn and trying to go out and do the best we can. Like I say, we're competitive, so hate losing. But realize that it's difficult to start off and, and to win in your first matches. So anyway, um, every episode that we have for this season, we're going to be following Joseph and going with Joseph as he starts off as a brand new USPSA shooter and works towards um, some big matches in the year. Probably going to be the last match of the year. It's probably going to be the Area 2 Championship out in Arizona. Arizona. And uh, so looking to do pretty good at that. And so going to be working all year and uh, kind of want to get that started off. But our new segment, Bleeding Off with Joseph. So with uh, USPSA, first thing is you have to be a member. Uh, same thing with ARA. It's just a registration, basically. It's extremely simple. They're essentially the same rules. I mean, if you're legally able to own a firearm, you can be a member. Uh, there's a little, like a yearly or maybe a lifetime fee. Um, I don't remember what it's, it's. I know there was a yearly one. There probably is a lifetime one, too. I think it's like 35, 40 bucks. Yeah, but it also gets you a subscription to their magazine too, I believe. Yeah, you get the magazine, um, which helps a lot. The That magazine actually posts a lot of the match winners, so that may be what we defer to for that. Um, but once you're a member, uh, really all that's left for you to do is start looking for matches. There are a plethora of matches, and it, it's not really location-based. Uh, they're everywhere, every state, um, multiple cities, uh, like just here in Texas, um, pretty much every major city, and even bigger non-major cities have them. Uh, San Angelo has a monthly match, Lubbock does, Midland does, there's two or three different ones in San Antonio, uh, Coleman right down the road has one, um, and most of them, there's at least one or two grandmasters that are shooting there and so they they know how to put them on they have good stages um quite a few people turn out for for even the smaller matches and it just gets your experience which also helps promote your classification um so with your classification 
you shoot so many qual qualifier stages, which there's usually only one in each match. Um, it just depends. They'll just pick one out of the qualifier stage book and throw that into the mix. And so depending on how you do on those uh, will depend on what classification you end up getting. Most people start off at uh, class C. Um, I'm still unclassified. I just haven't shot enough. Well, the what hindered me is the uh, probably the biggest match that I shot was an IPSC match. And so that didn't do anything to go towards my USBSA classification. Um, but once you're in, just start finding matches and just start shooting. Uh, that's, that's just jump, jump in both feet. All right, so tell me the classes you start off most. I mean, there's D class, C class, B, A. Well, it, it uh, master, grandmaster. I think right? it's I think it starts off as C. Okay. After your you start off as a U, which is unclassified. Right. And then I think it goes to C B A G for uh, uh, grandmaster and M for master, which is just below. Um, the highest you can get is a is a grandmaster. Um, and I don't recall the amount of points it classify classifier points it takes to get to that. It's quite a few. I mean, it'll take you multiple years of doing really well uh, to get to that point, um, because you're basically your your points has that has to be between ninety five and hundred, I believe, for grandmaster. Okay. And that's sustained over multiple matches. Right. Um. So I should be getting the classification here within the next two matches. Um, hopefully I skip C, go straight to B. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do anyway. Um, but once you're a member, just start looking for matches. Um, you will need to kind of predetermine what division you want to start shooting beforehand or pretty soon after you register to be a member because that's – that's going to depend on your equipment requirements and limitations. Um, like there's basically, so there's there's stock divisions and race divisions. There's only two stock divisions, and that is single stack, which is primarily 1911s. Like 90% of the people who shoot sing single stack are shooting 1911s. And that's really the um, only kind of hindrance there. Or limitation is it has to be a single stack gun, a single stack magazine, which I mean that pretty much dwindles it down to 1911. There's a couple other ones I don't know off the top of my head, um, and then production, which is kind of an updated. You can use like double stacked Glocks that have 18, 20 round mags. Um, has to be iron sights, which are posted sights. Can't use red dots. Um, you're limited on your holsters and your mag pouches. Uh, you can't use race holster, which is basically designed for race guns. You can get one for a Glock, uh, but basically it's, it's a holster designed to make your draw a lot faster without any mm -hmm. limitations. Um, it pretty much just covers kind of the trigger guard and not much else other than that. Uh, you can't use those in production. And your belt setup is limited, so your uh, gun and magazines both have to be behind your hip bones. And so whatever you're carrying has to be here and back, which is kind of a hindrance. It'll make you a little slower. Uh, you're not able to be as, be as quick. Uh, and then your race divisions, uh, which are revolver. Um, revolver is kind of a niche thing. Either you're going to do it or you're not. Um, just there's a lot of limitations and the people who do it do it really well um, you have to use those little moon clips All right. which are for the speed reloads and one thing that I just found out today that I didn't know before is you it's mandatory you have to shoot six rounds before you reload so you can't do like three or four mm. and then reload you have to do six which I mean Maybe the best thing to do because it's a six shot anyway. But I, I mean, but if you come to a point where you're going to have a movement, right. a move from one area to the other, yeah, uh, you may not be able to reload during that if you haven't shot. I just put six. a couple extra in the barn, I guess. <laughs> yeah, 
Um, and then your uh, limited division, which um, you have limited and limited 10, which are little higher end pistols. Uh, the only um, kind of restrictions on them is you can't have a compensator and you can't port the barrel. Uh, you can still use race holsters. Your belt limitations, like with production, go away. Um, it's really however you want to set it up. Uh, there are some kind of rules on that are just universal as far as how far away it can be from your body, as far as your mags. Um, but other than that, it's uh, pretty straightforward. It's extremely similar to open. Um, you just can't use a red dot. Uh, and then open is pretty much wide open. Um, almost all of them are red dots. I don't know. I don't think it's required that you have to have a red dot on an open, but if you're not using it, then you're not doing yourself any favors. Uh, magazine capacity limitations, other than the length of the magazine, it's really just however many you can fit in there. Most of them are going to be, I think, 27 for the big sticks. Because uh, it's like 144 centimeters, I think. Or maybe okay. 177. I don't remember. It's, it's pretty big. I mean, it's a it's a very large magazine, super high capacity. Um, but other than that, there's not really any restrictions on open class. Which is why it's so fun, but it's also, I mean, the whole thing of USBSA is practical shooting. Open isn't super practical right um but that's what i've been shooting that's kind of what i the first two matches uh first match i ever shot um was one that we went to in san angelo mm -hmm. i think that was last april was it april or august august um that was the first one i ever did i shot carry optics i shot a glock 34 uh with a red dot on it and didn't do very well but i didn't really expect to either um and then after doing that i figured out pretty quick that kind of open is what i wanted to do because it's it's not that it's easier it's just um more forgiving i think because the pistols are heavier they've got those big compensators and brakes on them um so the the accuracy aspect of it isn't as crucial as shooting like a production or, or carry optic pistol um, so you're able to go faster with a little more forgiveness on your accuracy. Um, so that's what we've been doing. Um, the biggest thing I think that helped me was growing up around guns that helped me initially, which uh, does a lot for the safety aspect of it because, you know, we're, we're not just running around with you know with no care in the world just everybody has guns and they're running around doing whatever they want there are strict safety standards for a reason um that's why there are very few to no accidents in shooting sports uh so if you're not well versed on safely manipulating a firearm then that's where you need to start uh, as far as trigger discipline um reloading keeping your finger out of the trigger Anytime you move, um, got to have that trigger out of the the uh, finger. Trigger, the trigger guard. Yep. Uh, yeah, your finger out of the trigger guard. Um, uh, once you master that, and I would uh, reiterate, master that <laughs> because you will get DQ'd quickly uh, if you if you don't practice safety in a competition. Um, then you can move on to the kind of more competitive aspects, uh, which are your accuracy for one, so your shots on paper or steel. You have to be accurate. Um, and then once you start improving that, then you can work on your speed, at yep. which you're able to do that efficiently. Um, and that's pretty much the gist of USPSA as a whole, is speed over accuracy. Um, I mean, that's what hit factor is. That's how they factor in uh, how well you do for each stage. So they give you a hit factor, and that's basically your speed over uh, shots on target. And so you you have to be as as fast as you can while being as accurate as you can. And those limitations are going to change for every shooter. I mean, your pro guys like Max Michelle, they're going to shoot a stage in four seconds when everybody else in the world is going to do it in five 
uh, and they're going to do it probably better than you. Uh, the equipment that I use, uh, it's all on, on the safety thing. One yep. thing too, though, on that because I, I'm with you on the finger out, and uh, I mean that's just something that's been drilled into my head my entire life. But the other thing is the break in the 180. Yeah. So and um, that's not just USPSA that does that. Right. Um, right. Some other shooting competitions have a little bit of leeway with that. Um, but that's basically, you have an imaginary wall. So if the stage is facing forward, you have a 180 degree boundary. And so you can only run straight this way, straight this way. And you have to be conscious of where your muzzle is pointing that entire time because you may be okay here, but here you yep. can As soon as you break that 180 yeah. with the muzzle, that's automatic disqualification. And it's that's just, essentially... I mean, it's pretty common sense um, because if you've ever been to a match or watched one, everybody that everyone else is there that's either not shooting right then or just, you know, spectating, whatever, they're all behind you. Right. And so that's them. I mean, you know, there's – if you break that, you're potentially going to be pointing a, a loaded, ready-to-go gun at somebody. Yes. Um, so that's what that prevents. Um it's not very hard to practice that or to train that. Um, pretty much just keep moving forward. M not very many stages are going to push that boundary line. Some of them will, but, but most of them won't. Um, and if you're worried about breaking that, then uh, you just need to kind of find your comfort level on how. Yeah, and I think it was for me. Cause it, and then I also had my son come out, uh, 15 years old, and going and – we just reiterated, you know, the first couple of matches, don't worry about speed. Yep. Just safety. hit all the targets, safety, and just get used to moving and doing everything um, in a safe manner and putting shots down range. Yeah, and that's all. So my first probably two or three matches, I already knew I wasn't going to win. I mean, I wasn't even going to get halfway up the board probably. And so my goal was to not get DQ'd. And, uh, you know, luckily I've – I've got a few matches under my belt now, and I haven't been DQ'd yet. Uh, awesome. So that's that's something that I really tried to to pound in to my head is you know the safety aspects of it over the um, speed and accuracy part um, because that's it's probably the biggest part of it is the safety. Um, the uh, belt that I use is a uh, Double Alpha Academy. And everything on it. So this is their uh, Alpha X race holster with their Alpha X mags. Um, I like mag the holders. yeah the mag pouches. Uh, I like these because they're um, pretty durable. They're not plastic, um, so I think that they're going to hold up because I don't want to have to be able be buying these like once a once right. a year or something like that. Um, and they're pretty movable i mean as far as the they can move them any which way sometimes they're too much i've always having to tighten mine <laughs> yeah. up because they come loose yeah yeah if you're slapping that mag around you're gonna move these things because there's little set screws that hold them in and yeah um that's just kind of the maintenance thing you have to check those things periodically make sure they're still tight and basically too some of the way we come across this was uh mark derbyshire the ceo of ely has been doing this for years doing ipsic shooting super shooter and come across and was teaching us how to do everything and this is what he used and what he recommended and uh and so we kind of just fell in suit with that uh if you're new and looking go to a go to your club because and talk to the match director because i promise you they're going to be super super helpful mm -hmm. and just They'll latch you with somebody and just look and see what they're using and what they're doing. And uh, there's a reason why the good guys use what they use. Yeah, or even, um, you know, if you have a friend or or just ask somebody, most people are going to let you try it, you know. Sure. You know, they'll well, we had some of these where we come, we had guys trying to watch, and they wouldn't let them watch. They said, nope, you're shooting. And they went and got them something so that they could actually compete that day. Right, yeah. Um, but the, I was lucky enough, so – I got to use, you know, whether it was your that first belt that you got or yep. or Mark's, um, so I got to to at least use it, and then I had an idea on what I liked about it, what I didn't like, and so that's one thing that I changed, because uh, yours has that, you know, that little uh, leg, 
that leg bar that kind of sticks it sticks down you. a little bit. Does it? I thought it's the exact same as that. Mm -mm. No, I I can't remember what it's called, but it's a it's a little spacer and it's got an arm that comes off with a pretty okay comfortable pad, um, and that keeps this thing from digging into your leg. Uh, I didn't like that. Well, see, I'm skinny and I need extra padding. <laughs> you got a little more meat on your bones and don't need the padding. Well, I didn't like that because <laughs> um, one thing that I n was noticing is like during the match, if uh, if I ever reloaded or anything, when I would go to pick up my mag, I had to bend over like a pregnant woman yep. because that was like pushing straight yeah, against no, me. Yeah, it does do that. And uh, so that's why I wanted this one because it's less uh, – less space taken up and it kind of has a little bit of an offset and so it sits up a little higher uh than okay. the, the little leg pad one um and i also had I've, I've moved this one around probably three times just trying to find the most comfortable spot i started running it pretty much in front which there's not any rules against that um but i had the same issue if i ever had to get down or there's yep. a, a low port or something during the stage uh, then I had some some issues bending over or, or getting up or whatever it was. So I ended up moving this back uh, towards my hip, and it's it's worked pretty well for me since then. Um, the gun that we're using, we run STI, and that's their DVC Open. It's a pretty high-end pistol. Uh, a lot of guys use them for the Open Division and the Limited Division. Um runs pretty well it, it runs our ammo really well yeah no it runs good only mm -hmm. problem is they quit making them yeah which i mean that's not their fault um i understand why they did that because of the the way that people are loading rounds um so that covers them i don't blame them for doing that it just sucks you can't get them anymore um i've been i think i'm kind of an, an, an anomaly because i am a new shooter but almost all the matches that I've shot have been very large, major, like, championship matches. Right. And so, um, even though my match count is pretty low, the matches that those included were, like, Area 2 uh, European Handgun Championships, very, very large matches that were probably a little more strict on the safety rules, which is why I'm, I'm such a stickler about them. Um, but it, I think it got me, you know, open my eyes – a lot faster than they would if I was doing, you know, little small, like, monthly matches Yes. Uh, every time. Um, so I've been working on that. One thing that I try to do a lot is dry fire. If you're doing any type of shooting sport and you're not dry firing, then you're doing yourself a huge injustice because that's a, a very large part of it. Um, you get trigger pulls, saves on your, your ammo purchasing, um, you get a way to monitor uh, your consistency as far as your trigger pulls, which with, with pistols is everything. Um, so that's something that I do almost daily is, you know, 50, 60 to 100 dry fire drills. And that's either just coming from a draw, getting on target fast or as fast as possible, um, pulling the trigger at least once. Um, you can get special mags and stuff that are dry fire mags. So you don't have to reset the trigger each time. Um, but that's something that I think is pretty paramount in uh, shooting sports is, is dry fire. And just practice in general. I mean, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're practicing, you're getting better. Um, and one thing that I've kind of gone outside to do is getting help from Blake, uh, Blake Lyles with 415 Training. He's a, he's a grandmaster. He's a really, really good shooter. Uh, he shot for a long time. And he has a lot of things that, that helped me. Just in the, the short amount of time that I've been working with him, he has helped me tremendously. And a lot of that is with movement. Um, and I got kind of lucky growing up around guns and shooting all the time. My uh, shots on target aren't as big of a hindrance as, like, my movement is. Like, as far as my footwork or stage planning, stuff like that, I don't, I don't have to spend as much time trying to be accurate as I do trying to to get the movement part of it down um, so that's helped me out a lot working with Blake good deal good deal so your first match what was the biggest takeaway you had from it you think uh under 
understanding your skill level. Um, because, you know, just like anything, um, I don't think it's just me, you know, going in there thinking I'm going to burn this thing down and, you know, be like a, some kind of prodigy without ever actually having to like work at something sure. as, as far as practicing all the time. Um, you know, I knew I wasn't going to, going to win, but I had kind of higher expectations that I didn't meet. And so, uh, to me, that just makes me kind of sit down and just list out everything that I need to work on, which as a whole seems like a lot, but if you break them down, they're, they're pretty simple things. If you work on them individually and then they kind of tie in together. All right. Very good. And next episode, we're going to get Blake is going to come over from 415 Training and going to help us get started on what new shooters need to be doing, kind of give us some tips, what he's been working on with Joseph, what he's seen that, you know, is common for new shooters to go. So be sure and come back over and listen to us again. Um, what else on that? Or is that about a wrap on bleeding off? So tell me what bleeding off is. Bleeding off with Joseph. Uh, so bleeding off is a movement um – I believe it's a universal term. Uh, it may just be a Blake thing. but So bleeding off is so if, if you're transitioning. Um, from one target to another. From one to another. You So if you have a target on the left, um, you can start shooting. But you know you need to be going this way. And so you to can. Right. Yeah. So if it's uh, an easy or hard exit, you can start that movement instead of just shooting static and then moving to another static position. And so it's kind of a, a merging transition. A fade away. Yeah, basically. <laughs> it's And it can be either either really fast or, or slower, depending on the distance of the target, the size of the target, cause, and that goes into a whole other thing as far as. Right, and we'll talk more about that. <laughs> we'll get Blake yeah. in here. Blake Lyles again with 415 Training. Going to be with us. All right, well, folks, I think that's going to about wrap it up for episode one. We hope you enjoyed it. Please bear with us as we're learning as we come through this, too, learning how to work everything, but we're having fun with it. Joseph and I are both podcast, uh, I don't know what you call it, junkies. Fanatics. Fanatics. We both love podcasts. When we thought about doing this for the shooting sports, I thought, man, that's going to be fun. So uh, jumped in and said, what the heck, let's go do it. So here we are and uh, going to do that, and we hope you've enjoyed it. So be sure and subscribe to the episode, and it'll notify you whenever they come up. Be sure and tell your shooting friends about it and pass that along, and uh, and go ahead and give us a rating on there. Email joseph.s at Kello Shooting Sports. Give us some tips or say, hey, knucklehead, I heard you, da, 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 or whatever we need <laughs> to do to be better or what we can do. Uh, to make it more enjoyable for you what are some topics you would like us to talk about we'd be glad to bring them up and uh, next episode we'll be talking about tuners for two two long uh, rifle we'll be going over our the match i'm going to the hired prince indoor club we can be going over that and then by then uh joseph will be back from the florida open talk a little bit about that match and how things went and he'll be getting ready to go to the henry's cup Henry's down cup. in rosenberg Texas the weekend after that. So looking forward to our next episode, and we appreciate everybody listening. Thanks a lot, and have a great day.